Welcome back to Amazing Life. In the last episode, we camped at the Cottonwood Beach Campground on the Alcova Reservoir with some motorcycle friends who were heading the opposite direction on the BDR Trail. As they head north, we'll continue heading south in this episode, completing section three of the trail, ending in Elk Mountain. Turns out we had to take a detour right off the bat to get there. So sit back and enjoy a glimpse into what we saw on this section of the Wyoming BDR. From detours to ghost towns, we explored it all. Thanks for watching. So we're supposed to go that way on the route. I'd like to find a way around that doesn't involve getting on all that pavement that, 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 that the guys were talking about. So there is a track up here, just right up. I think that's it right there. That if it will let us. This is BLM land right here. So it's, the problem is, I'm not sure what happens right there. Yeah, we may get that far get that far around. around, which, you know. At least it's short. It's not, yeah, it's going to take it long. It's pretty easy dirt, too, so it's not going to be rough. I say we do it. All right. If it doesn't work, we'll turn around and do something else. <laughs> The challenge was this trail went in and out of public and private land, meaning there could easily be a locked gate somewhere down the path that could stop our progress. We just didn't know. We also wanted to make sure everything we were doing was legal, and we all need to respect the land, both private and public. It's what keeps it open for us. So far, so good. No locked gates and no signs stating that travel was not allowed. So onward we went. Well, we're riding right along the private land and so far I don't see a fence. The edge of it. And I don't see a fence at all. It's, it's uh, I don't see a fence up ahead either. What's that big drop? I think we're going to go do this. That must be the... I think that's the state representing where it switches. Maybe. Maybe. Or that from there over. Yeah. So, we are about where it intersects where we will have to cross. Yeah, so... I mean, so far, this has been... This is beautiful out here, and it is, like, if you like... If you like two track to where you feel like you're just kind of going through a farm, this is it. This is cool. I feel like I should, you know, have a horse, but <laughs> <For sure. laughs> but I can say that if it's wet, this would be nasty. I mean, it'd be nasty in a Jeep, much less a motorcycle. So, yeah. uh, cause this is just sand and oh, you'd be buried up to your axles. Uh, but it's dry as, dry as powder right now. So, and we're walking into this is private right now, yeah. so we're good. So we're good as long as we as can get as, out on the other side. Right. What we're doing to detour this, this is the blue is the actual route, and this is where we started. This is where the road is closed. So we backtracked and went down this route, and then now we're going out of the way up here, but this kind of goes off into oblivion. So we're gonna go right and come down here, and then we're gonna meet up with this a uh, little more real looking road and go up that way and then we'll head back into the track so assuming this private land stuff holds we should be good i've got to tell you this the sage smells so good. It never gets old. <laughs> I know. So this road is kind of grown up enough to where there's sage in the middle of, in the in the road. So you're running over some sage, and of course when you crush those 
those petals, it just fumigates. It's just, oh, it's amazing. So yeah, we're actually making good progress now. And we're back on BLM. Back on BLM, very good. So it's been interesting just how useful the drone has been actually to, to kind of scope this out because these trails, while they're trails, um, they haven't been used much. And so you can just, from the ground, you can hardly see them. But then when you get some altitude and look down, you can actually see where the tracks go. And so I just got through um, scanning up ahead with the drone and determined that um, based on what I can tell from the air, they do meet back up, uh, and and the, there's a creek going through here. Was that was that we had to cross? That was my concern that it, maybe it's you know washed out too much or or just impassable. And from what I can tell from the air, it looks like it's going to be fine. It's a little dicey um, at the actual junction point, so we'll just see how that works out. Because um, there's only so. It was over the hill, so I couldn't really go and get too low of altitude because I was worried about losing uh, connection to the drone. So, um, yeah, it's pretty rocky through here, and uh, we've got a little bit of this to do. So, there, we'll see where it leads us. That is a pretty big dip. It doesn't. So the, oh my gosh. That sage is intoxicating. All right, so it supposedly goes somewhere through here. I actually liked it better when I had the drone up because I could see a little easier. This trail is so overgrown. So this is supposedly where we're going. Okay, so just to catch you up, um, we went down the one road that should have, you know, based on what it looked like was gonna work, uh, and it just disintegrated into nothingness. And so- Complete going, nothingness Complete nothingness. And so we're going back, um, and we have found another uh, trail that uh, actually still gets us to the road. We just got a little backtracking. Yeah, so, we yeah. can see the road just right up there where we're trying to get. Yeah, and I can see the road this one, I can actually see the road and follow it the whole way up there. So it's been it's been used a little more frequently than this one. Apparently, they, <laughs> apparently they quit using this one. So we're going to back out and get back on this road, which is coming up. No, that's, I don't know what that's for. That's weird, but it's not inhibiting yeah, us in like any a, way. It's like a gate. Woohoo! Look at us! All I right. Let's go! Yay! <laughs> All right, I love.
like this. We made it. Phew. Okay. Yeah, I, so we can clearly see the road ahead. I think we're now finally back on. Now we get to start. So <laughs> now we actually get to get on our trail. The trails that we took to get to our trail. The three hour detour. <laughs> It was uh, very, it wasn't three hours. I was like, <laughs> the, Gilli say, was the Gilligan's <laughs> Island. Five passengers set sail that day for a three hour tour. A three hour tour. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. One of the concerns that I've had since we didn't know how close the road was is that if we do figure this out and we get down the road, are we going to actually get far enough down the road to be past the closed part? I don't know yet. <laughs> I really don't know. And I do see pylons, so hopefully they're just talking about the road going the other way. I do see a tractor trailer or a tractor down that way, so. Well, we're going to see here in a second. We are on the trail. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> oh my word. That was sketch as crap. So we left the trail at the point it was closed on that end. And right at the point where it closed on this end. And we did it legally. Out. Best we can tell. Best we can tell. We use it. Yes. We did it legally. Came across BLM. <laughs> and <gasps> what a ride. Okay. Next. <laughs> All right. So that took us an hour and twenty-four minutes. That's yeah. Not bad. Not bad. I'm pretty sure the um, pretty sure the detour would have been faster. Probably. But it would have but... not been near as beautiful. So. Yeah. It's all that's, good. that's what this trip is about. That's the adventure. Just starting to get onto the Shirley Mountain. Um, is that what it's called? Shirley Mountain, yes. Shirley Mountain. Mm -hmm. And so. Coming from the north going south. North going south. So it looks like it's going to start getting into that rocky section that the guys talked about yesterday. So And really pretty. And really pretty. So we're going to go ahead and air down. I have taken a little nap, which made me feel a whole lot better. <laughs> and. Yeah, this now, is a really cool campground. It's a BLM. Yeah. Campground. Not yeah, and this spot here is like all shaded. And yeah. The trees, the wind coming through the trees. Very nice. Very relaxing. <laughs> if we were ready to stop, I'd I know, actually this, stay. This would be a cool spot. <laughs> but yeah, we need to we need to push on through, um, get some more miles in, and find a little spot maybe on the mountain somewhere. So. We didn't take two seconds to get out of the campground and we were no longer in flat country, which is maybe why they call it prior flat. I don't I don't know. I think that is a very a very direct way to name something if that's the case. because uh, it is really getting pretty in here now. Um, we've got rocks on both sides of us. We've got taller trees and this is getting really nice. We're almost at eight thousand feet now and climbing, so and we're making pretty good progress going, going up. Ooh. 
We were surprised how few bikes we passed given we were traveling the route backwards, but when we did, we always attempted to give them space to keep the dust down and let them get by safely. We're going to pop over to the Shirley Mountain viewpoint because I really think it shows overlooking the valley. So I think we may pop on out to that. And I'm also really curious about what's up here. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. I think we found our camp spot for the night. Look at this. That's not a bad view. So we just left probably my favorite campsite that we have found on this trip because it looks like we're about to get a storm and it was up on a mountain, um, Shirley Mountain, gorgeous place. So this is some place that we really hope and really want to come back to someday. But um, we felt it would probably be safer and best if we got off the mountain just because of the terrain that we're having to drive through will get really bad um, if it gets really wet. And so we're going to go on head to Medicine Bow and we know we don't know if we can get there before dark as far as finding other campsites. We do know we can get a hotel room, which um, <laughs> I think we really need because we need a shower. We need hopefully to get some laundry done and um, uh, probably just a break. I mean, I am absolutely loving, you know, camping out, but you know, every once in a while, you just kind of need those comforts, or at least I do. So anyway, that's what we're gonna hopefully do tonight. So stay tuned, we'll see. And I gotta tell you, the rocks in this section are just torturous. They're, it's just constant bumping. And we've got a, we've got a long slog on it too. So it's beautiful country, but it's, uh, shaky to death so and we're at we're aired down too but
After getting off the mountain, we hit some pavement for a bit before reaching Medicine Bow and finding the historic Virginian Hotel. Welcome BDR riders. Well, that's good. They're trying. Yeah. Oh, there's the town. Oh, all of it. <laughs> oh, there's a laundromat. Oh, okay. All right. All right, we'll see what happens. Here we go. Yeah, let's see what we got. Well, there's the bar part. That's cool. That looks neat. And they're eating. That's good. It's very positive. All right. Thank you. What do you want to eat? Ranch or anything? Um, ketchup. Okay. Okay. Well, good morning. We have made it. Uh, we. I feel like a new person. Uh, had a great meal at the <clears throat> at the Virginian. Had a nice stay at the Virginian. Uh, we're actually still checked in. Uh, now we're going to try to get some laundry done. Uh, it looks like, you know, like a hotel room. It's kind of weird. Um, but sure enough, we've got Maytag washers. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so, that was nice. Yeah. And then there's Those dryers dryers. in the other room. No, these are dryers. Those are washers. Dryers in the other room. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. <sighs> So anyway, we're gonna get this done and then we're gonna get some breakfast and coffee because I could use some coffee. This is how they had it back then. This, yeah. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're leaving Medicine Bow and the Virginian. And I have to say, I had a great experience with the Virginian. Uh, I, I think a lot of it is what do you set your expectations for? Um, I was not expecting the Ritz Coulter. Uh, it, oh, it was it, clean. It was nice. It was clean. It was nice. Uh, and the food was really good and certainly good uh, atmosphere of people. You know, the, the people are working hard there. Literally, our waiter uh, was also our register for hotel. He delivered our food. He cooked our food. He cleaned up um, the tables. Mm -hmm. uh, and apparently, he also cleaned the room. Was it the same guy that did that? No. Okay, it was a different guy there. Um, so anyway, if you stay at the Virginian, um, I would highly recommend when we got there, all of the cool rooms, like in the, in the old original building, they were all taken. Um, but I got to peek into them and look at them and seriously, it's, it's like you're, you're going back into the, you know, 1900s or whatever, you know, so. Yeah, I believe it was started it, it, in 1901, finished in 1911. It, it was cool because like literally there was a train station, um, you know, going right through and because that's that's how these western towns were born the stop was so worth it for me i have clean hair clean clothes the laundromat was just around the corner really nice you just need a lot of quarters um but honestly 250 for a, 250 a, washer for a wash wasn't yeah wasn't bad so we did three three loads because they are small washers but one dryer because they're the massive maytags um probably spent dollar fifty on that to get all three loads not, dry i mean not real bad so not bad and great for you know cleaning up getting things getting things clean leaving the virginian we were back on dirt and came up to the cemetery of carbon city fascinating the age of so many of these um, I would say the older uh, are in their 50s uh, at best and the younger are in their uh, assuming they didn't die at birth 
or you know within one or two years are in their 20s I saw one that was uh, served in the Spanish American War uh, you don't see that every day and I'm also surprised at just how large of a cemetery this is I mean it's a it's a good sized cemetery for a small town um, and of course you know they had several plights that hit them along the way that uh, took out large swaths at one time and which is very common I think we take our I think we take our longevity for granted these days uh, you know you, these guys back then they lived like there was no tomorrow because there <laughs> very likely wasn't so uh, makes you grateful for turning 50 this year and by these standards I'd have been dead or almost dead you know it's, it's kind of crazy we chatted a little with a motorcycle group coming from the opposite direction, sharing experiences of the trail. They headed on north, and we headed south toward the ghost town of Carbon, or what was left of it. The town of Carbon was constructed as a result of the Union Pacific needing coal to fuel the locomotives coming through. As such, the town was born. And that was the life of a town in the early West. It was out of either need or greed. Maybe both. The desire to strike it rich, or a way to share the burden of creating a railroad that connected the states together like never before. The creek going through the town wasn't permanent, and so they often received water by rail where they stored it in large cisterns. As such, cholera, diphtheria, and other plagues wreaked havoc on this small little town, leading to the large cemetery we just visited. There wasn't a lot left of this town, mainly just the rock foundations that had the wood structures placed upon them. People living their lives to the best they knew how. We all leave here at some point. The question is, what do we leave behind? Most of us want to leave a legacy of some sort that will live on after we're gone. I guess the question is, what is the foundation we have built it on? That seems to last the longest, at least in a western town. Well, we're heading on. I really believe we're making our way pretty quickly. Pretty quickly, we're going to be getting into the mountains. And so uh, we've got a little bit more of this type of stuff to go. And then we'll continue the journey. That is an upside down car wreckage it looks old well and it makes me wonder if it went all the way down that cliff and it's just been there ever since well Gaia shows that there's a trail up there I want to get a better look at that see look at here right here oh yeah and it's up elevation so it's probably right in there mm -hmm. let's just take a gander and it's interesting uh, are you gonna fly? Yeah. Okay, we'll go over what used to be a, apparently a little lake or a little pond oh, or yeah. something because it's all looks dried up. So this is one of the things I absolutely love about drone flying is you get to see perspectives. But if you're curious about something and you obviously can't drive there, that would not be good um, for anyone involved. Um, you can just fly over and take a look at it. So I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> So that's apparently called Seven Mile Lake, and it is no more. So I'm not sure if it's a temper, you know, if it's like comes and goes based on the season, or whether or not it's just gone. I don't know. Let's go back down to the sky. Let's see if I can figure out what this thing is. I can tell based on the wheel wells and the form of it, it looked old. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is definitely an older vehicle because it's got the old school hatchback. 
if anybody can recognize this and know what it is, post in the comments. I'd love I'd love to know. It's like the old Studebaker or something like that. I bet there's a story behind that one. Pretty cool. All right, well let's march on. I eighty. Yep. Looks like for the first time uh, across down the entire state of Wyoming, we are now looking at what civilization looks like. <laughs> well, vaguely. Vaguely. <laughs> That's I eighty. I knew I eighty well from living in Omaha. Hey, there's a gas station. We probably have to yeah, let's go ahead and get fueled up. And they do have diesel. Yeah. 529. That's better than. Well, we were happily paying in the fours. Um, so it's higher than that. But yeah, but better than 10. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> All right, well, we're pulling into Elk Mountain now. Uh, tiny little town, I think. Well, population 150. Yeah, population 150. So uh, that's going to be kind of fun. And. Here's what Elk Mount. That's. I think this is it. This is it. <laughs> Town. Town Hall there on the right. <laughs> Public library. Look at this. All in one. Look at that. It's cute. Elk Mountain Museum. There's a museum there closed. Closed. Now, really so yeah, Elk Mountain is a very small place. Um, cute little town. There are some RV parks, cabins, things like that that you can rent. Um, oh, here's the RV park. Well, that's, that's the Elk Mountain Hotel. Oh, the historic Elk yeah, Mountain that's Hotel. What we're... That's where everybody says to stay. Yeah, so... Or at least eat. We've heard fantastic things about the Elk Mountain uh, Hotel. And unfortunately, we looked at we looked it up and it was already booked um, solid. So, And that is something you need to be aware of, especially if, if you're going through prime time, that uh, they, do, uh, they do tend to book up and, and be full. Uh, partially because of the BDR. So just be aware of that. But... Um, I've heard fantastic things about the food. It's a little pricey, but I've also heard that it's really worth it. So it's um, it's really good good food. I don't think is it not open. But do they not even have? I don't know. Guests. Clock securely. This is beautiful. They are not open for lunch, though. So. Established in 1905. Wow, well, this is really cool. Much of the hotel is still in its original form from its creation in the 1900s, including the wood floors, which gave me pause as I considered the rugged people who came here seeking refuge from the harsh climate on their journey. Check out the series Hell on Wheels as it will take you through the building of the railroad, including all the shenanigans that likely occurred in the process. This picture was taken when the two railroads finally met and joined connecting the east to the west. All these towns popped up along the rail as it was the only artery that provided life to those in the west. All right, guys, so I think that's going to end this episode. Uh, this is the end of Section 3 for us, going north to south. And stay tuned for Section 2. That will come up in the next episode. And we're looking forward to getting up on Elk Mountain. And I think there's a lot of – this next section, I believe, is really, really pretty. So Yeah, I've heard snow-covered mountains. I don't know if we'll oh, see really? snow this time of year. but Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Again, that's Section 2. Guys, if you like this video, please like subscribe to the channel, like uh, this video, and uh, ring the bell for notifications for future. Uh, until next time, and until the next episode, 
Make, make life, life amazing. amazing.